go ahead and get the meeting um, called to order. Do you want to do the roll call? Sure. Todd Williams? Here. John Caldwell? Present. Kathy Peterson? Here. Renee Davis? Here. Roger Lang? Here. Ken Peterson? Here. Nelson Tipton? Here. Wes Lowry? Here. Kevin Bowden? Here. Um, Francie Jaffe? She's not here. here. Jason Elkins? She's not here. Heather McIntyre is here. Uh, Councilmember Martin? Here. Okay. Next item is approval of the previous month's minutes for January 27th, 2020. Is there any questions, comments on the <coughs> meeting minutes? If not, is there a motion to uh, adopt or approve the uh, meeting minutes? So moved. Okay, motion. Do we have a second? Motion and a second. Um, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The water status report. No so today the flow of the uh, St. Bright Creek at the Lions Gauge at 8, 8 a.m. was 20.3 CFS with an historical average of 15 CFS for this date. Um, Ralph Price Reservoir of Ben Rock Reserve is at 6,387 feet, which equals 13,440 acre feet. So down approximately 2,700. 60 acre feet from full, and we're currently releasing uh, 20 CFS from Royal Price Reservoir. Union Reservoir uh, gauge height is at 23.58 feet, which equals about uh, 9,086 acre feet, so down approximately 3,100 acre feet. So, um, and we're releasing 5 CFS roughly. Um, the call on St. Grand Creek is Union Reservoir, admin number 19,271. With our priority date of 10 6 1902. So, Union's still in priority, so we're running a little bit of water. Um, we've got some icing issues because it was pretty cold the first part of February, but other than that, now we're back kind of running, um, taking all that we can. So, get some water in there. The call on the main stem of the South Platte River is Burlington Ditch, admin number 22,239, with a priority date of 11 21 1910. Currently no call affecting District 5. Local storage at the end of January is approximately 71% of average. And then uh, uh, snowpack, Wes will go into more detail on the snowpack under water supply update, but Upper Colorado is roughly 118%, South Platte is 139%, and St. Bray is between 130 and 135% of average. Great. Any questions? Any questions? All right, thank you, Nelson. Sure. Uh, next item, public invited to be heard or special presentations. Is there anything there? Any public that would like to be heard today? Me? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I brought an article. This is the Science Journal research article that's been in the news lately about um, the Colorado River. This and one? How, oh, oh, <laughs> is that you got the new one? I'm not there was one on KUNC. That yeah, that's the KN, KNUC had it a couple of other places. This is the, the Science Magazine, American Association of Advancement of Science, it's actually a research paper. Okay. And so I was going to ask that all of you get copies. I didn't sure. get a bunch of copies, but I was hoping you could see your some name of or the... Oh, okay. yes. Gavia, G-A-Y, T-H. I A okay. Weiss W E I S. Great, thanks. And so, yeah, if you, that's more understandable, probably. <laughs> but this has got all the detail. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, beat me to the punch. So. Okay. Well. Okay, your turn now. <laughs> okay. Um, and you, you said there's no special presentations. Okay. 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 Um, that's item five. Item six. Is there any agenda revisions or submission of documents? Yes, um, I have one for the legislative update. Um, normally I wouldn't like to give you legislation to look at at the board, but this bill is one sentence long. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can handle it. Straight straight forward. Forward. <laughs> <laughs> so we can uh, so this all one? This is actually uh, House Bill 20-1164. Talk about that in the legislation. Okay. Thank you. 
one sentence, but it's a page long. <laughs> <laughs> um, next item is the development activity. Looks like Wes, you got your hands full. Yeah. So there's a number of uh, development activities put in front of the board today. We have five different ones requiring board action. Um, we can either do them separately or all together, whichever you want. Well, provide. they all take recommendations, right? So yes. I wondered if we do them one by one and do a recommendation on each. Sounds good. And then we can just work our way through and then then we can maybe talk if there's any major comments. We can talk one by one. I got kind of a comment on all of them, but why don't we go through them one okay. by one to start? So the first one in front of the board is Sugar Mill Annexation. It's a 17.44 acre parcel located south of Great Western Drive and West East County Line Road. There are no historical water rights pertinent to the annexation. Therefore, the Sugar Mill Annexation is presently in compliance with the raw water requirement policy. At this time, it will be a time of final plat with satisfaction of the 52.32 acre foot deficit. Um, additionally, I understand that the proposal for this annexation will be to put in approximately 112 paired homes. So, 112 paired homes. What is that? Duplex. So that's going to be called yeah, duplex. Like, like, yeah, it's probably going to be like your duplex, duplex, duplex or like something yeah. like that. So hmm. What is there now on that piece of land? So, <laughs> right now, I don't think there's anything. That's why it's being annexed. I drove out there this morning. And I was really curious because it's a. I was trying to figure out exactly. I mean, I exactly where this 17 acres is because it basically it's the old one of the Great Western holding ponds. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's cattails. Oh. So I'm. So I was just well well. Uh, I don't. I mean, again, this is out of our bailiwick, but it, it just was kind of strange to me that unless they're gonna. Yeah, between wetlands and between filling, I, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they know what they're doing, but it was just curious that, speaking of what's there now, it's a, yeah, I, I, it's a wetland. I mean, but there was trailers and nothing else. There's been a lot of storage out there, too. Well, that's just on the east. That There's a, there's a um, kind of a Quonset thing that's just east of, on the east side of this. Mm -hmm. I was amazed how many residences there are down there along Great Western and south yeah. of Great Western. There's a I didn't realize how many, how many people were out there. I don't know anything about the annexation. I know about the Great Western developments out there. Yeah. Anyway, but again, that's that was just curious to me. So, okay. which doesn't have anything to do with our role. That's interesting. I think we're planning. I think they're planning to bring a plat in front of uh, in front of the DRC and probably water board in the very near future. So when we do, we'll uh, have a little bit more detailed information. But certainly, they would have to comply with whatever. Right. Oh, of course, of course. I but yeah, it's probably it's, what we found is most lands that have yet been developed are that way for a reason because they're not the easiest to develop. Right. So this sounds like one of them. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> So on this one, we won't know until later probably what they do in terms of cash and lieu. Or I mean, they they don't have any native water, right? So it's all going to be cash and lieu or Macintosh or something along those lines. Historic, so historic. Not historic. I, I would not be surprised if it's cash and lieu. Okay, it, and then I guess with regards to the water supply demand demand analysis that was done, I assume this was included. I mean, all these were included within that. And I guess what I'd be curious if there was big land use changes from what was modeled in water supply and demand in relation to what's actually coming in. Um, so it sounds like I don't know what this was, this plan land use was in that. Uh, uh, I didn't have step. to write that down. We, um, as, as I recall, it's the same plan uh, land use that was prescribed okay. when we did our analysis. So it's probably similar. It's okay. All right. So all the land use we used in the water supply and demand evaluation was based on Vision long one. Right. So okay, it would have to be the same land use unless they apply for land use variance, which is a whole separate process. And if I remember right within Vision Longmont, the only big question was they had some that were pretty flexible. They were flexible. 
So how that was modeled in relation to what actually we see in, in an annexation, you may not know a lot of that, but yeah, yeah. Some cool. of these come through. They have like a mixed use development. Right. And it can be a number of things. Right. That realize what actually happens. You know, that would have not be realized or understood. In public okay. But I guess it does follow. I mean, if it's duplexes, triplexes. I mean, it's yeah. still more dense mm -hmm. development and stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. A question. Um, were you the one who was out there? I said I was. I was John, 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 Bell. Is there a homeless encampment out there? There's one right there somewhere, and I was wondering if it's still there. Oh, I, I didn't drive. I, close. I basically was, I was right, I was just driving along um, Great, Great Western Drive. Okay. And there's actually a road, it's pretty interesting out there. There's, there's a road that takes off Great Western and goes down um, to this, it's not a Quonset, but this. Um, storage unit that's just it's off of county line it's kind of an interesting mix of stuff out there <laughs> so i had a question marcia and mm -hmm. where is the in terms of the set development setback from st brain where is that still in discussion or is that part of regulation or where, where is that discussion at it is part of regulation that there is a 150 foot setback for any development there is a, well, it's a spreadsheet, but it's essentially a checklist of, of uh, things that you would have to uh, satisfy in terms of benefit to the city or benefit to the environment if anyone wants to apply for a variance to that setback. So um, it's... It is regulated. I mean, it's, it's, it's regulated. It is regulated. It's in the code, yeah. and the default is 150 on each side from the tree line. So it's pretty far. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Otherwise, we need a recommendation. All these take recommendations, right, Wes? Correct. To, to council for approval. We're going to see it here. What's that? Oh, there we go. See it here in a minute. Perfect. And well, it's yeah, it's on the moon there right now. Yeah. I'm wouldn't just wouldn't come up for the longest. Somewhere in the United States. Is there? Oh, I see. I forgot. I left, <laughs> the, I left the refrigerator light on. It's moving slow because of the updates. Oh, the updates making this. Yeah, unfortunately, the computer's update, but at the same time, we're trying to use it. So here, here's, here's here. If I if you allow me, yeah. yeah, this, yeah. So this, yeah, this is the, yeah, this is where the cattails are, and uh, here's the, here's the river, and actually, we, I guess this, what this, well, this straight line is actually there's a berm oh, I can see that, that goes. Yeah. There's berms here, so I guess it's not really a wetlands, and I guess I'm assuming they're going to have to do some fill where I. I don't know. It's just curious. It's really an interesting spot. To <laughs> that's what it. That's what it is. It's all lime pits from. Well, and actually, though the, the lime. The lime is from the back here. I was going to say the lime's back there. Yeah, but yeah, the, the but this those that obviously uh, captured the drainage. Drain yeah. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, okay. Okay. I'll move that we forward to the city council. Okay, we have a motion to recommend this to the city council. Is there a second? A second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. So the next one is the Highland Subdivision Final Plat. The Highland Subdivision Final Plats, a 52.89 acre parcel located north of State Highway 119 and west of Globe County Road 1. <coughs> All the historic water rights were transferred at time of annexation. Uh, the Highland Subdivision Final Plow will be in compliance with the city's raw water requirement policy upon satisfaction of the 37.122 acre foot deficit 
at time of final plan approval. So this was part of the Ludlow annexation. Um, the proposal there is for 42 single family detached units, 10 three story condos, kind of an entry level, and 67 townhomes, which are classified as luxury townhomes. Um, uh, we're expecting for this one, the owner's been, or the developer's been acquiring non historic water rights for some time. He's been working with the city for their inclusionary housing efforts. And uh, so we'll be probably getting non historic for this. You mean Macintosh or? Macintosh and maybe some uh, oligarchy. Okay. <laughs> Any questions on this? <laughs> if not, we need a recommendation. Um, for approval to the City Council on this item as well. Yeah. I move that we um, send a recommendation of approval to City Council. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you. The next item is the Mountain Brook Subdivision Filing 1 Final Plan. So the Mount Brook subdivision filing number one final plat is a 38.05 acre parcel located south of Rogers Road and west of North 95th Street. Uh, again, uh, historical water rights were transferred at time of annexation. It will be in compliance with the raw, city's raw water requirement policy upon satisfaction of the 12.563 acre foot deficit at time of final plat approval. So the proposal here is for 92 single family homes and then eight uh, duplexes. The duplexes will be through the habitat for each community. <coughs> and uh, this is the same developer that's developing the prior one that was described, and they too plan to use non historic water rights. Okay. That's another affordable housing. It's going to be a component of that through okay. habitat for humanity. Okay. So will there be a, I know we passed the uh, change to the ordinance or whatever where this could. So to the extent that it affects it, yeah, then that would be included. So we're, st they're still. Um, and that would come into play with their amount they pay for cash in lieu or the amount of water so required. So it has to be a percentage. They're, they're the, on this particular one, the 92 single family homes is greater than the, the amount that you have to have a greater than whatever it is, I 12, see. The percentage. percentage right, right. But with these eight duplexes, it didn't trigger that. It's I just, but I wanted to identify specifically that there was, uh, four duplexes that we're going to be with the gotcha. of humanity. Gotcha, thank you. Okay, any questions on this? If not, we need a recommendation to council. So move. Okay, we have a motion for recommending this for approval to council. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. So next one is Mountain Brook subdivision filing number two. So right next door to the last one we just talked about. Also, so uh, Mountain Brook subdivision filing number two is a final plat at 28.13 acres, also located south of Rogers Road and west of North 95th Street. Um, historic water rights again were transferred at time of annexation. Uh, this final plat will be uh, in compliance with the raw water requirement policy upon satisfaction of the 9.93 acre foot deficit. On this particular plat, they're proposing 18 single family detached, 120 multifamily condos or apartments, and 29 townhomes. This is going to be, they're describing as a multi year build out, so this is going to take a while to fully develop this one. But again, the same developer as the prior two plans to use non historic for the, for the bulk of their satisfaction. So I'm just curious what the, why they brought they through count? two filings rather than one? Is that I think some of it has to do with the ownership. Uh, when this annex, HMS annexation came through, there was multiple owners as part of that annexation. So there was, I think there was some of that involved. Different ownership. Then, yeah, okay. yeah, I think. There was other reasons, I'm not sure what they were. Any other questions? If not, is there a recommendation uh, to council for approval? I'll so move. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Who seconded that? Because I got a tie on that one. Roger. 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 You got it, Roger. Yeah. 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 Y
right. Oh. So, no oh, further God. discussion. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. What do we got here? We got river set annexation. So, the river set annexation is a 7.24 acre parcel located uh, north of Rogers Road, east of Sunset Street. No historical water rights uh, permit for the river set annexation. For river set annexation is compliance with the raw water requirement policy at time of annexation and will be at time of final plat uh, approval with satisfaction of the 21.72 acre foot deficit. So this one is a proposed mixed use employment zoning is what it was given. Um, they're thinking up to 32 live work units and then some commercial and retail, but those mm -hmm. units will be fleshed out when they bring to their plat. Okay. What, uh, what's the address again and location? I it's 18 South Sunset Street, but... 18 it's South Sunset Street. the northwest so it's corner of... Oh. North, north, yeah, the north, actually the northeast corner of Sunset and Rogers Road. So across oh, from uh, awesome. Colorado Materials. Oh, uh, uh, so yeah, uh, Okay. So that's an interesting question. So it's currently a county enclave, right? Um, Essentially, no. essentially, there's yeah, there's another piece. Of, it's not yet annexed on the east or the west side of. Because I was, either. I noticed on the work that it says Rogers Road, and I was curious if that was the still because it was in the county versus Boston, because it's. I mean, I think of it as being Boston. Boston, yeah. yeah. But it says so. I was just curious what that was about. Yeah. Suffice it to say, it's the parcel that's directly north of Colorado Materials. Right. And yeah, it'll be Boston once. But I was just curious, is yeah. that the reason that it's Rogers on the paperwork is because it's still, the count that as far as the county is concerned, it's still it's Rogers, true. but it's, you know, I figure that's what it probably is. But it is north of Rogers. Correct. Well, no, it's, well, <laughs> well that's well, it gets confusing. Well, I'm Maybe you're trying to up your vision was there. That's yeah. a <laughs> it's, so Lawson, Lawson yeah, construction has a lot of construction. Yeah, yeah Lawson's parking is his concrete. Yeah. So Lawson stuff. actually owns a lot to the to the north. So this is this is a piece not owned by Lawson, but directly adjacent. So Ken, okay. but he's got he's, he's got a bunch of his there. equipment parked on yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah, all over the place. Yeah. yeah, but it's that rough, roughly that rectangle there uh, in the northeast corner. You know, you get the opinion that land is a little tight around here. I'm not kidding. The stuff they're developing <laughs> now. It's not easy, Steve. Have you noticed that most of them are just Right. But that, what they're talking about, I think it really will create an anchor on that corner that will help facilitate the de that, because that whole area from on, on Boston mm -hmm. is going to get, over time, is going to get redeveloped. And by having an anchor there, it'll, it seems like it just facilitates getting that stuff done. I think we'll see probably this year land annexed to the west of Sunset Street, so that will probably be coming through. Any further questions? Could I just add that's a payoff for doing some of the St. Brain, Brazilian St. Brain work because. I think part of the alleviation of flooding in that area is part of what spurs the development. Is there a motion? I'd make a motion to forward the city council. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> All right, let's well, hear in the home stretch here. West Grange filing number three. So the last of the six. Uh, West Grange filing number three, final plat is a 29.22 acre parcel located south of Nelson Road, east of North 75th Street. West Grange filing number three, final plat, will be in compliance with the city's raw water requirement policy upon satisfaction of a 50.989 acre foot deficit time of final plan approval. So this one is a development um, that's going to be uh, developed by Markel Homes. They're planning 143 single family detached residents. And on this one, uh, they're planning to pay cash in living. So that'll be a, a good jump. 
Any questions on this one? If not, we need a motion for recommendation, recommending it for approval to council. Do um, we have a motion? Is there a second? <coughs> motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I guess I'll make general comment. If I add them all up, it's about 885 acre feet between non historic and cash and loo that for these six. So just to kind of keep tallies of how much additional either non-historic or, and it sounds like the majority is non-historic, but quite a bit of it's cash and loo. If we receive the cash and loo payment, that's about $900,000. Okay. Um, if you're to get cash and loo on all of them, it'd be about $3 million, but we already know that some of them's going to be right. non-historic. So yeah, it's, we're, there's another development that we, you know, we brought through um, in January for English Filing 3, they also plan to be uh, bringing a check in tomorrow. That'll be about a little over $100,000. Okay. So. How much do you think you head now with the total number of housing units? For this one? For all of these. For all of them together? Yeah. Have to add them up. Close to 1,000? Yeah, it's a it it's, it's an hour thing in here. Yeah, it's right. just a big number. Okay, that's close enough. Because it's all on your own. I'm just blown, I have to say. That's a lot. City of Longmont, East Tree Creek uh, Water District, Rapid County Water Authority and United Water IGA for water exchange agreement. Yeah, Todd, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that one. Okay. Um, so, as you indicated, it's a short term water supply exchange agreement uh, considered an IGA um, to working with those water districts. Um, as the board may recall, Longmont has been entering into this particular exchange agreement for five plus years now. So the only thing that's changed from year to year has just been the, the year, the actual dates on um, there. So everything's kind of kept the same. Um, the basis of the exchange agreement is water for water. So um, East Cher mainly East Cherry Creek and Arapaho will use their uh, decree with consumable water to um, help meet Longmont's um, ditch loss component of our Union Reservoir Change Decree, 87 cw 222 and, and the reason it's a, a benefit to us is that um, the ditch loss is owed in July and August, and when it gets really hot, the, we have to get the ditch loss component down to the um, Union Ditch Headgate, Lower Latham Ditch Headgate, and the Beecher Ditch Headgate. And there's typically a uh, dry up in July and August right around that Lower Latham, and the Beecher is below that. So East Cherry Creek and Arap Arapaho have their water rights that are, are actually measured and then coming below that uh, dry up. So it's really helpful for us. And they don't have to pay a lot of ditch losses to have it coming down there. And so then the benefit to them is that Longmont has fully decree fully consumable water rights that um, will help meet their uh, winter return flow obligations. Mm -hmm. uh, typically from November 1st to October 31st. Like I said, it's water for water and uh, benefit to both parties. It's been working out well for the last five years and we'll continue to do the each year. We've got a couple questions there. Any sure. other questions? Um, it, so you mentioned substitute water supply plan that that's what they're going to use for being able to use Longmont's water. What does Longmont have to do? Is it Are you guys allowed per your decree to use yeah, their water as a source? So, so they have to get state engineer's office approval, okay. and then we can use our fully consumable water rights, the same as them, to meet because it's the, their, their decree for augmentation, replacement, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, as long as it's approved by the state, then it's allowed by by both. Okay. So. I mean, I was just wondering if there's there's some supply plan. So they get the they have to get the approval, um, East Cherry Creek Rapid United, by, from the state engineer's office. So we as Longmont do not, since we ours are decreed for to be 
use a replacement. Oh, I see. Okay. Follow me? Yep. Last item. So it had in here that they can't provide water, any subject political entity, or for any use within an urbanized area defined in Chapter 14.09. Is that for the Tri Cities um, with the Longmont Municipal Code? Both for the water supply reviews on the Tri City area, yeah. as well as any water in the oil and gas industry. Yeah, okay. Right. And you also saw in there we have the, that new paragraph we've added recently for you that it mentions is no, none of this water can be used for oil and gas. Yeah, I saw We that. have it stated right in there now. Okay. Okay. So. All right, that was all I had. Was there any? Uh, I'm just curious sure. on the ditch losses. I mean, is there any thought of lining the ditch or reducing losses? So, so it's a little bit different. If you yeah. it's, re it's return flow and ditch loss. It's so, anyway, as part of the um, so so when we when, when City of Lama did the change case, so so they're not injured, then the water rights that we removed from the, the ditch just so Union, Lower Latham, and uh, Bijou, so so they're not injured. The other shareholders remaining in those ditches were required as we go through the court process to make sure that they're not impacted. So that's why we have to get the ditch loss to their head gate. So typically, what that ditch loss will do is stay in the ditch for so none of the other remaining shareholders are, are injured. They don't have to pay any additional on top of what they already have to deliver. You follow me? Since we okay. took the water rights out of that ditch. Okay. That, I hope I did it. I think I kind of understand. Yeah. Okay. It's really paying for Delivery. historical ditch loss that occurred prior to 1986. Okay. Okay. With the water right that pertains to the water rights that the city of Longmont okay. changed. And that's typical for most of the change cases that we that we do. All right. So the remaining shareholders are not uh, impacted by the, the change decree in any way. So they're not harmed in any way. Okay. Any other questions? Is there is it do the amounts that we exchange every year turn out to be pretty similar, pretty consistent. What I was thinking of, if we, if we exchange on our end 600 AP, but they only do 300, is there any adjustment or how so, does work? So how that works basically, John, is is we we don't know when we do the the exchange agreement now what exactly mm -hmm. the obligations yeah. are going to be for right. until we, um, our fill period is done uh, June, June 30th so of each year. So, um, so we have to have that done into the state by the first week of July. We have to figure out how much was stored in our city of Longmont's account in Union Reservoir, and then we calculate the placement obligations with the ditch loss. So that's why we put a max number in there of 600 acre feet. Mm -hmm. So once that's calculated, then we know what that number is, and then that's the number they need, and then we, the city of Longmont, matches that. So it can't exceed, but it can go anywhere between there. And it varies each year on how much we store. And we were down almost 5,000 acre feet this year in Union, so. And a good portion of that, 85% of the city of Longmont's, um, you know, share of that, so. But the amount that they provide is the exact amount that Longmont exactly. provides, regardless of whatever it is, yeah. so. Okay. They Reserve. do their part first, and then we match it. We later match on. it. Because theirs, theirs in July and August, and ours is November right. through March. So, okay. it's equal amount, water for water. Okay. Works yeah. out good because if Longmont, if there's a dry up, and I've said this each year, is we, we can meet it, the, the ditch loss. We can meet it. But we have to, typically, we have to slug it in order to get it all the way down 30 something miles. And then you have the transit loss. Sometimes it increases when it gets dry. So, we, we're, we're kind of don't have to. If, as long as we have this exchange agreement, we don't have to. Well, the other benefit it. you get is you can meet it with effluent during the winter primarily. So right. then if you had to slug it, you'd probably it's be out of union. Out union. So out union's union. levels would go lower too, right? Yes. I mean, and before this exchange slug. agreement, we were slugging it when it was dry. Right. And in some years, you know, we have rainstorms and we don't have the dry up and, you know, it's a bit, it varies from year to year, but typically it's a. But it seems, we're, working out it seems like regardless, this is in Longmont's best interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. works out really well. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other questions, comments? Otherwise, um, they want a recommendation yes, please. from the Water Board Council. So on most the, likely, I didn't indicate that most likely uh, we'll be going to City Council on March 31st. Okay. Unless it gets bumped in any way, then it'd be April. But for now, it's March, the, end, the last meeting in March. Okay. 
Is there a, a motion to make a recommendation to council for approval of the intergovernmental agreement? I would move to make a recommendation for approval of this intergovernmental agreement. Okay, the motion, is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thanks, Nelson. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate all right. Um, Wes gets to give the good news of the large fly update. So, um, just to kind of follow up with some of the information Nelson gave the board, uh, included in the packet is monthly information from a uh, number of sources, the first being the USDA's uh, Colorado Water Supply Outlook Report. They put that report out each month. Um, because of this month, us being uh, maybe a week later, we're only a week away from getting the new report. However, suffice it to say, in their February 1st <coughs> report, <coughs> Uh, they reported that the snowpack in the South Platte River Basin was above normal at 119 uh, percent. They saw precipitation in January was 79 percent of average, and that brought the uh, water year to date at 99 percent. Uh, reservoir storage at the end of December was 111 percent of average, compared with 104 percent of last year. So, to summarize, we were in better shape than we were in the past. So that was good news. Um, as we move forward a couple of pages in your packet, looking at the reservoir storage end of January, a little more uh, specific. Um, we had uh, of these select reservoirs, about 838,000 uh, acre feet in storage compared to the year prior, which was about 773,000 acre feet in storage, and an average of 758. So. The South Platte looks good in terms of storage. Um, uh, moving forward a couple pages, we, as always, pay closest attention to the forecast for the same rain creek of Lyons. Um, again, the expectation for both April through July and the April through September is that um, we have a greater chance than average of exceeding our uh, stream flow forecast for those periods. So let's keep evolving as we move forward, depending uh, most predominantly on the snowpack, but as of their February 1st, we were uh, expected to have uh, a greater chance than not of having average snowpack. The next couple graphs, the South Platte River Basin history, that's for the NRCS. Um, it was reporting as of February 19th, a uh, percent of average of around 127 percent for the South Platte, which was which was good to see. Um, on the next graph, the Upper Colorado was showing at 114 percent, so both of which were above average. And as you see from either of these graphs, you can see if you pay attention mostly to that uh, kind of like last year was indicative of most of them. One good snow in uh, February or March makes a big difference because those are usually so so wet. So hopefully we get one or two of those and that'll uh, put us over the, over the hump. Um, so we'll bring back that, that updated information next month. Um, the last page just has the Northern Water Snow Watch information. It showed the same thing, everything running uh, above average. Uh, this particular one shows that Copeland Lake was uh, significantly above the uh, prior data. Um, so we had good wet snows down low. Um, but we're also, by having those early snows that we've seen in February and uh, November, that was good because those are the snows that get snowed on top of ice in and come out late. So I don't want to jinx it, but right now things look good. Yeah, no. <laughs> we won't make you eat yeah. those words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions for Wes on the water status report? Right. Great, thank you. Um, 9B is the monthly legislative report, Ken. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, wanted to update you on two bills. Um, House Bill 1097, which was that bill for the interconnected systems, allowing water right that's been changed to be used in an interconnected uh, system. Uh, it died in the House Ag Committee. We postponed it indefinitely, so uh, that one was done. And Senate Bill 20 153, which was, um, which we were opposing, 
to set up a water fee for water projects it basically would have required us to have a pretty healthy water rate increase and so long months customers have been paying for somebody else's water project um, that was postponed in the Senate Ag Committee they postponed it indefinitely so um, those two those two bills are done um, I did hand out today um, a copy of the bill that um, Here. Uh, House Bill 1164. It's really just one sentence. It actually, the, the title of the bill is a bill for an act concerning an exemption of the housing authority from certain fees imposed by Water Conservancy District. And so, um, and, and the, the sentence that the operative sentence is uh, giving an exemptions from Water Conservancy District uh, fees. Um, it's, uh, this sentence is proposed that in addition, all property of whatever kind or nature owned by a housing authority within a water conservancy district is exempt from any tap fee or development impact fee imposed by a water conservancy district. So um, we don't have a whole lot of information from the other water conservancy. I have called Northern. Um, the last I talked to them, their board had not taken a position, but I don't know if they took it, but did they take it? I haven't position. seen this before. Okay, so um, so I don't have any of the Water Conservancy District's reactions to it yet. Um, I would think they would be opposed to it, um, but we're just it has not. Um, it is oh, no, excuse me. It is on the house. It is in the second reading on the house, so it's starting to move a little tiny bit. Um, but I. Um, I hope I could get some information from the service district. I guess we're probably leaning towards opposing it for the simple reason that uh, in the language I couldn't find even really a definition of tap fear development impact fees. That was going to be one. It's, it's, if you just read the language, you would presume that that means treated water. The only water conservancy district I'm aware of in the state that provides treated water is the Ute the Water Conservancy District over by Palisade Grand Junction area. And, and this may be coming out, something going on over there, but I'm not sure I've, I've heard from them uh, their, their thoughts on it. But I would, uh, I would have preferred to have it defined. <laughs> Yeah. It also um, it starts to make me uncomfortable whenever you start giving stuff away free by statute. You know. um, I think it could be. Uh, I definitely would oppose it if it's in a city. It should provide free, <laughs> uh, but you know, that once you once you start this um, this kind of effort, so. I don't know if the board is prepared to take a position yet, because I unfortunately don't have a lot of it, but I wanted to highlight it to you and uh, just let you, let you consider it and, and see if you have an opinion one way or the other. Um, if not, I'll certainly continue to track it and I can bring back more information next month if, if it has to be longer. Thoughts on that? Do we just monitor? Who, who, who are the people? The people are reaching yeah. back people from, you know. So, yes, um, Becker, so um, Janice Rich is from Mesa County, which is the Conservancy yeah. District. So that's where I suspect that's going from. Uh, Karen Becker is here Boulder. Actually, she represents Boulder, Clark Creek, Gilpin. I think she's from Boulder. And Rachel Zenzinger is from Jefferson County. And, and I don't think it's, I don't suspect it's as much their issue as Janice Rich's because she's from yeah, the that on this side. Okay. So that's, it's, um, Janice Rich is a Republican from Mason County. So it's got a little bipartisan support. Uh, Karen Thacker is Democrat from Boulder, House District 65 Boulder, particularly. And Rachel is from Jefferson. So who sponsored it. So it does have both a Senate and a House. 
And that's really about all I can tell you. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I, I, I can't give you a strong recommendation one way or the other. other, than, other than, uh, staff is, I guess, uh, initially opposed to it just because it's pretty. Uh, I'm concerned that the tap fee should be defined. I would hate for it to be read like the assessment. Northern Water levies an assessment on CBT units. Right. Everybody pays an equal share divided by 310,000 units. And should you know, should somebody say, well, that's a that's a impact fee. That's a tap fee. Or, and of course, Northern Water doesn't own any water, so they don't do tap fees. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, would, it would trouble me what somebody could say that really means, and or. For me, it's also that then you start taking it. That's step one. You take it right. So it sounds like staff's um, suggesting that we pose as any thoughts on that. So um, from my perspective, with tap fees, development fees, system development charges, assuming that's what they mean, those are really important that growth pays for growth. And the, the part that I'm curious about, what makes it a housing authority? Can some developer say, well, well, we got a housing authority, so we don't have to pay fees. And, and you're right, if it's just a treated water conservancy district, it doesn't seem to affect us. But I, I, don't, I don't like it. don't like the precedent. I don't like the precedent, no. I think growth really should pay for growth. Okay. Now, I think housing authority is probably otherwise defined in the state <coughs> statute, but it's not defined in Title 37, which is water. And it's not defined here. Right. So I agree with you. Again, I believe when I read it, I believe I know what housing authority means. <laughs> sure. So do you want to make a motion to that effect? I don't know that it doesn't seem to apply to us right now, but I'd be comfortable if we wanted to have a motion to um, oppose this, to recommend that we oppose this. Okay. Other thoughts? Okay. So what do you guys want to make a motion? I move that we oppose House Bill. 20-1164. Second. <coughs> second. So a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Ken, anything else on that? Thank you. Yeah, I'll have a legislation this month. Okay. 9C, which is the Wind Gap Permitting Project. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to, to report. It'll seem like not a lot going on in the Wind Gap Permitting Project, but actually, um, there is quite a bit, um, although it's, uh, we, there's a legal, all the attorneys for all the cities have, have been working pretty hard on starting to develop an allotment contract, um, and we're struggling with, the legal committee struggling with, we have a allotment contract and a operations contract, or do we bring them together, and it's, it, it's, much more complicated than it sounds, <laughs> and, um, and but that's fine. We've had two all-day sessions, uh, and we'll have more, one more. You know, we've got another one scheduled coming up, so I'm working really hard on that. So um, hopefully, hopefully in the next month or two, we'll start to see some good progress on that, and, and we'll be able to come before you uh, talk about that. Um, not a lot of progress on it. Well. No progress since last month we reported on the federal case. It was reassigned to a different judge because of a backlog on the district court. Um, and so um, it wouldn't surprise me that that's a number of months for the new judge to even crack the case open to find out what it's about. Um, so n nothing on that. Um, on the state water rights case, um, continuing to have good conversations. There's still two uh, remaining objectors to you have good negotiations with them, but aren't there yet. So I um, thought it was hoped it would have been done by the end of this month, but it looks like it's still a little ways out, but uh, that's still ongoing. Uh, the contractor is mad at work getting, getting um, uh, project uh, proposals together, all, all the different equipment determine their methods and means and, and working with the technical staff on that. So, so that's 
going forward so that hopefully that's all ready for you to vote. So it's right now that's about all we have to report. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Ken. Um, item 10 is items from the board, review of major project listings and items tentatively scheduled for future board meetings. Um, we'll review cash and lieu again in March, so next month. Is that right? Yeah, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to, uh, Public Works and Natural Resource staff will be able to report both on Union Reservoir and Mountain Rock um, uh, efforts. And then we sh we're expecting to have uh, the board's annual report available for you guys to review the next month, too. Great. Sounds good. Any questions on that? Um, next item is informational items and water board correspondence. Um, I handed out that the sounds like maybe the same report that you had um, brought. What's the research behind that? Oh, good. Press yeah, the, I just gave the, the executive the high level. Yeah, well, so let's start reading his first. Um, Mine has all the charts and data. That's great. Anyway, I think this just came out. I heard about it just a few days ago, so I think it's pretty mm -hmm. hot off the presses. Um, sounds like in general they're talking about hotter temperatures, which you know, part of the result of that is less snowpack and less kind of reflection from the um, from the snowpack, which means more maybe heat absorbed and more kind of issues with the remaining snowpack and the water supply. So they're talking, I think in this they're saying every Celsius degree increase means potentially a decrease in supply. River flows by nine percent, so that's pretty <laughs> pretty scary. Um, I guess the other thing, and I guess the one other piece I wanted to maybe relay from my end is, so the, the city of Fort Collins did a, a drought a, a climate change analysis and how it would impact their system, including CBT yields. So the Northern District, I went up and we spent about three hours going over that. Um, in, in general, what I understand is coming as they're saying it would likely be hotter, but there's, and it alluded to it in this report, there isn't really a consensus as to what will happen to precip. It's kind of, I think there may be more variability, but they're not sure it's going to be necessarily less precipitation or more precipitation. That's a little uncertainty, uncertain with the, um, the studies to date, but there may be more variability. Um, I guess in my mind, big picture is, you know, I, I, I know it may have impacts on the Windy Gap Firming Project in terms of lower yields and what that means in the Colorado. The flip side of that is, if you're going to have more variability, you better have some storage <laughs> to capture the water in the wet years when you do have supplies to carry over into maybe the more variability in terms of the dry years. So uh, that was just something I wanted to... Um, kind of relay and that that study that Fort Collins did if anybody has interest I can um, I think I got a link to the, the study I can send that to you guys but they get pretty deep involved in the, the modeling of their system and how it would react to higher temperature and more or less precipitation um, and what that means to the kind of vulnerability or reliability of their system that's what they were trying to look at and then look at their water policies in relation to that so Anyway, um, just a couple of thoughts there. I, I didn't know. I, I know we went past public invited to be heard, but if you want to, you well, be yeah, I think the that. key is that everybody thinks of this as a precipitation issue, and of course it matters if it's rain or snow, but it isn't just that. That the bare earth, because of the higher level right. of evaporation and transpiration, means that you you can have as good or even better precip, but end up with less yield because of those losses and right. that's what's really the this article is saying is going to very negatively affect the Colorado River which of course then means that the water right that supposedly might exist at some points in time for Windy Gap exists in much much less points in time. And well and once again it'd be kind of that variability of okay. I think the last few years have shown you may have some good years where you can pump but you may have some bad years too. So the yield may go down, but you're still gonna have in some years, if you have a good year. You, another thing that I guess I'd allude to, and they allude to it at the end of this article is, 
in 2026 is when the current operating guidelines for the Colorado River expire. So they're supposed to, before the end of the year, start ne renegotiating, you know, five years in advance, uh, um, new rules. And that's going to be key to this whole deal, too, is how, you know, we've got drought contingency plans, but all that is kind of a stopgap until these new, um, you know, operating guidelines come into effect, because that's going to impact the upper basin, lower basin kind of relationship in, in some of the, the allocation of the water. So there's a lot of variables <laughs> right now um, that, anyway, this just kind of highlights a, a few of those that are common uh, climate as well as kind of administratively. So anyway, I, thank you for bringing that. I appreciate that. I think that yeah, since we make some copies, I think it's good background yeah. information because you can go to the charts and see what they're talking about in the press release. I appreciate that. I didn't feel like I think the lowest this myself. Oh, that's fine. If you could do that, uh, maybe Wes and Ken for the next meeting, that would be, uh, I'd appreciate seeing kind of the stuff behind it. So. Um, any questions, comments on, on that? Thank you. Appreciate it. Anything else um, from the Water Board as far as correspondence? Item 12, 12A, um, so we'll consider cash in lieu in March, we talked about. We'll have the annual Water Board report in March as well. Yeah, go ahead. Um, just real, we don't have it down, but um, reminder to the water board, we've got this Northern Spring Water Users meeting. It's April 7th in Greeley, and it's open now. If you just go to the, uh, if you give Heather a call or you can sign for yourself, let Heather, she can sign you. Uh, it's in Greeley. And then um, also, uh, I wanted to, I want to try to get you updated each month on the climate emergency and more of what the Climate Action Tax Force is doing. So um, right now they're focusing on renewables, transportation, and energy use. So they haven't launched their water um, committee yet. Uh, all of that um, effort's coming up. However, on March 3rd, um, city staff is going to be doing their monthly update to city council. So that packet should be coming out probably tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. Uh, but as soon as that packet comes out, we'll just uh, email you a copy right. of the packet so you kind of see where it is and, and where it's out. And I, don't, I don't know, Marsh, if there's anything else you wanted to, you know, you probably know better than I do. <laughs> well, exactly I, 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 I do know some on. stuff for the Renewables Committee. We've, we have uh, several essentially complete recommendations that have been submitted already. I don't know that they don't go past me for the other two committees uh, yet, but um, uh, the middle of last week, each committee was supposed to submit at, at least one. So that's kind of where we are in terms of, of how much volume that uh, we can expect. Okay. Anyway, that's, that's for that, yeah. Okay. And right now, that's all the features that I have. Okay, thank you, Ken. For that, that's all we've got on the agenda today. Anything else? Otherwise, I'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.